what I want to do to kick this off is we're going to kind of look at this. We're going to look at in kind of three sections. So in the YDF program, for anybody that's not in the YDF program, we'll kind of just explain it very briefly. In the YDF program, we've got kind of the mindset section where you, you really need to learn the mindset stuff. We've got the kind of platform where you need to grow a platform in order to grow your business. And we've also got the business section. That's where you need to make the money. You need to bring in the money um, in order to grow your business as well, in order to help more people. So we're going to kick off the kind of first half. It's going to be about mindset. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. So today, I've got something that I've never really taught before. I've spoke about it on the lives, but it's called the belief principle for business owners. And this is part of the mindset stuff. But I can't stress how important this stuff is for you to actually believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, and this kind of transferred over to your personal development kind of side as well, if you don't believe in yourself on the business side of things, that's going to affect every other area of your life as well. We can all know that. So we need to get this kind of down pat as well. So we're going to be speaking about the belief principle just now and how to kind of look at your beliefs, how to find out what your beliefs are, because a lot of us don't know what beliefs are. So if I was to ask you just now, what are your beliefs about yourself? You kind of go, you don't really know because we've never really questioned your beliefs. You, don't say, you can't really tell what your beliefs are because we've never really questioned them. So, this is me, when I was a wee boy. <laughs> that's, <coughs> that's me on the left, by the way, as well. And that's my kind of wee sister trying to hold my hand there, and my big sister at the top there as well. Now, when I, this is how I discovered the belief principle. So when I was a child going to primary school, and I guess that's kind of elementary school, so from the age of kind of four and onwards, four to 11, we go to primary school in kind of the UK. And I discovered that I wasn't very good at school, or rather, my teachers discovered that I wasn't very good at school. And they kind of thought I needed to go to a special kind of education school. Um, because I wasn't doing that well in class, um, whenever the kind of teacher was trying to teach me anything with the kind of regards to arithmetic, kind of English, anything at all, I just wasn't picking it up. And I, I couldn't speak properly either. I kind of had a speech impediment as well when I was younger. And this kind of went on for a number of years before they discovered something. So the way kind of we discovered that there was something wrong with me, not kind of mentally, um, but wrong with me physically, is we were taking a, a family photograph and my mum was standing behind me and she kind of whispered something in my ear and I didn't respond. I didn't respond to it at all. And she thought I was kind of strange. So she, she kind of whispered again a wee bit louder and I still didn't respond. And she discovered that I was actually going deaf. And nobody had kind of picked this up because what I'd done is I'd actually kind of learned to lip read naturally. When I was young, at this age, I'd learned to lip read. Um, but when the teacher had her back turned or anything like that, obviously I couldn't lip read. So that's why I wasn't learning in class. And so she took me to the doctors. And it turns out I had something called glue ear. So I wasn't going fully deaf. I had this something called glue ear, they call it. So we get grommets put in the ear. But at school, I was getting teased. I was getting kind of bullied in that when I was younger. I'm not saying that to say, oh, that's, that's a shame. That's not to do with that cause because out of that adversity has come this, where I am today, has come that. Um, so I kind of got bullied and I was called thick. People would call me thick. And because I heard the teacher saying, you need to go to a special education school and stuff like that, I took that belief on. Uh, and I mean, I really took it to heart. And I was very kind of quiet because of all that as well when I was a kid. Um, but I had this deep down belief that I wasn't intelligent. There was something wrong with me. Because I'd heard it so often, because it was affirmed to me that I wasn't intelligent, I was thick. And kind of people in this playground used to kind of bully me about it as well or kind of tease me about it. So we got that sorted. We got the grommets put in the air. Managed to hear okay. And I remember coming out of the hospital and I heard a plane for the very first time. I'd heard it before, but it was a dull roar. But when I came out of the hospital and I heard this plane, I'm going, that's so loud. And I actually realised I could actually hear properly for the first time. And it's such an amazing kind of feeling to be able to hear properly. But the thing that stuck with me was that I was thick. I kept that belief that I was actually thick. There was something wrong with me. I wasn't intelligent at all. Until 
when I was about 14 years old, um, when I was at high school, and I passed my history exam, I got an A, because I was really interested in history and kind of English, and I was really kind of into books and stuff like that. And I, was wa- and I remember I was walking down from school, it was about a mile walk from my school to the house, and I got an A in history. And I felt really good about myself, thought this is brilliant. But then I realised, I'm not thick. And it was just that moment, just to say, I'm not thick, I'm, I'm actually intelligent. And then I kind of looked to evidence to prove that I wasn't able to pass these exams, pass my English, my geography, everything else. And then I kind of turned that belief around to say, I'm intelligent. The beliefs that we have come from the I am statements that we give ourselves. I am whatever it is, and that becomes a belief. But I managed to turn that belief around from I am thick to I am intelligent. And that was the very first time I discovered the belief principle. And I realised, not that time, kind of years later as well, but through that experience, it's not our reality that shapes our beliefs, it's our beliefs that shape our reality. Your world, literally, and I mean literally in a literal sense, not a metaphorical sense, but through your beliefs, whatever you believe about yourself, whatever you believe about the world around about you as well, is because of your beliefs. You see the world through the belief filter that you have just now. That's how you see the world. If you can change your beliefs in business, in personal development, in any area of your life, if you can change your beliefs, you literally change the way you see the world. And your world literally changes. So as I was saying, the belief filter We see everything, we see the world, we see people, we see our social kind of selves. Everything we believe about ourselves and everything we believe about the world is seen seen through the belief filter that we have in our lives. And so if we can manage to change that, as I said, we literally change the way that we see the world. And that is a good thing. When we think about it, we think, oh, that's a good concept. But when we really grasp it, when we really get it, and we really take this on board, we can literally change our lives in so many ways, especially our business lives as well. So we've got to have those business beliefs as well as the personal beliefs as well, because we change. When we change our business beliefs, we change our personal lives as well, because it's all interactive. So I always say that 70% of business, anything we do in business, is down to kind of our personal development. So 70% of business is about personal development. So we don't just change our business beliefs, we're changing our whole lives because of that as well. So, using the belief filter, we can look at pictures like this, and this is just an example. Somebody could look at that and see a kind of beautiful picture, somebody could see, oh, it's very dark, um, but if you have a kind of belief filter on, we can change that to make it look an absolute stunning. It depends on what our belief filters are. So we can make pictures look stunning, or the world look stunning in a different way, because of, of our belief filters. And we can see this in real life as well. With kind of people that have mental health problems as well. And that person is obviously looking in the mirror, she sees herself as fat. But we know, we can see that she's not. She's not fat, but it's, it's her belief filter. Because of her belief filter, if she could change her beliefs, everything changes. Everything changes. That's how powerful it is. And conversely, this is kind of what I see in the mirror. When you see something like this, (laughs) (laughs) thinking, oh, that guy's a hunk, he's cool. (laughs) So it can work both ways, not just negatively and positively, it can work both ways, the belief filter. So in business, this is really important. I kind of thought about this when I was doing this kind of speech as well. And I thought, we can actually make a million dollars a year with the same beliefs that got to us to, that got us uh, to ten thousand dollars a year. So something has to change within us in order to get to the next level. So if we think about it in business, especially, and this is all about business, but it kind of goes into your personal life as well. We think about it. We can hit walls every time we go along certain areas of a business. We can hit a wall. Say, okay, I can't get past that, and a lot of people give up and they drop off the first wall. And the first wall might be, say, $10,000 a year. That might be the first wall, and they drop off. They say, I can't do it, it's not working, I've tried everything, and it's just not working for me. But if you can get over it, and you can get over it, this is where your beliefs come in. If you can get over that $10,000 wall, and say, okay, to the next level, what's the next level? Maybe $50,000 a year. 
for example. And then you come up to the next wall, and that's the $50,000 a year. But if you think about it, the walls are like half an inch thick. This is a wall here. $10,000 here, you put the wall, it's half an inch thick to go over to the other side to get to $50,000. Then $50,000 a year is half an inch thick as well. And it's all down to your beliefs. All down to your beliefs as well. So we're constantly evolving as human beings, but not necessarily evolving as a business owner. So it's taken us, I'm kind of going to guess who's the youngest in here, it's taken us 20, 30, 40, 50 years to get to this stage in our life as a human being. Because human evolution on a micro level is so, so kind of slow. So we've got to, and we've still got loads of shit going on in our lives just now, but we're still evolving as human beings. But in business world, the business world is changing so quick, we need to evolve at a much quicker rate as a business owner than we do as a human being. Because business is changing all the time, social media is changing all the time, and we have to keep up with it. And again, that's where a lot of people kind of give up because uh, they're kind of giving up saying this is just changing too much, can't do this, but we need to keep up with it and we need to keep our business evolution mind kind of going at a much quicker rate than a kind of human evolutionary mind. So we have to take control of our business mind evolution and make a conscious effort to change at a much quicker rate. And the first step to that is becoming aware of the beliefs. And we're going to do an exercise later on as well. And um, just to kind of make you look at yourself, not make you, but kind of get you looking at yourself in a different way. And that kind of starts with kind of being aware of what your beliefs are, being aware of who you are as a person. It all comes down to awareness. And a lot of you in here will know that as coaches, as kind of healers, and kind of product creators as well. We're all kind of in the best personal development kind of business space as well. We all kind of know this stuff as well, but do we take it on board for ourselves? We can teach this stuff, but we have to be able to do that ourselves as well. And we have to look at ourselves constantly, maybe on a, a daily basis, a weekly basis, a quarterly basis, and just kind of look at ourselves from that point of view as well. But as I said earlier, what we learn in our business, the business beliefs we have, are transferable over to our personal lives as well, because it's all intermingled. So we can change what we have in a business and transfer it over to a personal life as well. And I heard this from a guy called Sam Ovens. Um, it was a post on Facebook and I thought this just kind of sums up. People don't have business problems, they have life problems that reflect in their business. And we can sort those life problems out and we're talking about beliefs here. If we can truly start to believe in ourselves as human beings, as the change creators that we are, because every single person in this room is changing somebody's life. You're all changing somebody's life in some way. Everybody. If we've done a live show, if we've done a video, if we've got a Facebook page, if we've got a product out, we're changing somebody's life. We might not realize it, and we might not think of ourselves as life changers, but we so are life changers. We're changing people's lives all over the world. Everybody in this room is probably affecting millions of people around the world. And that's not an understatement. We're all affecting millions of people with the pages we've got, with the live shows that we do. And just the information that we've got. It's just we're all changing lives and we have to realise that. And we have to own that as well. Own it. Own the fact that you're a life changer. That's powerful. If you can own that and you say, I'm touching somebody's life. And you start to believe in yourself. And you get messages, and I'm sure a lot of us have got messages on Facebook just to say, what you said was so amazing. It just changed my life. We had somebody in here today that kind of went up to Maria and just said, you've changed the way I see the world. You've changed my life. And that was so amazing to see. You do that as well. And you've got the power to do that as well. And you might think that, for example, an image quote on Facebook. So I make all these quotes up on Facebook put them to beautiful images, and we might think, oh, we're just doing that, we're trying to get more followers and stuff like that. But we're not, that's not all we're doing. Somebody is getting an aha moment from that. Somebody is feeling something somewhere, somewhere in the world, somebody is feeling something from that image quote that you put up. It might be your own quote, it might be somebody else's. But how many times have you heard, that was just the message I needed to hear today? On a Facebook Live, an image quote or anything, and they write to you and say, that was, that was the perfect timing 
that's the universe. It's just beautiful to see these kind of messages coming through. And we just get that timing, and it says that was just the perfect timing for me. So, <clears throat> how are beliefs formed? This is my favourite part as well, because this just, just kind of amazes me. I just love this part. Our beliefs are formed by the age of seven years old. Most of our core beliefs that we have are formed by the age of seven years old. And you go, kind of seven years old? I would, we don't even understand the concept of what belief is at seven years old. And yet most of our beliefs, the beliefs you hold just now, most of them are formed by the age of seven years old. The core beliefs that you have about the world, about yourself, it's all carried over from when you're seven years old or up to seven years old. And that just kind of blows my mind, as I said. Um, but you have to ask, well, where do we get our beliefs from? And we think about it, we get our beliefs from our parents, our primary caregivers, our teachers are giving us the beliefs as well, because we believe, as young children, we believe kind of what our teachers are saying, we believe what our parents are saying, we believe what our kind of peers are saying, what the media is saying and everything else. And you so say that's where we get our beliefs. But then you ask the question, where do they get their beliefs? Where do their parents get their beliefs? If I got my belief from my parents, then my parents must have got their beliefs from their parents. And then you go, holy shit, their parents must have got their beliefs from their parents. So some of your beliefs are literally hundreds of years old, passed down from generation to generation to generation. And you're carrying that just now. That's why it's so important to look at your beliefs particularly around money beliefs. Money beliefs is a big thing that's passed down from generation to generation. I remember my generation, or I was in my generation, I sound dead old when I say that, but my kind of parents' generation, I always remember we, we weren't very kind of well off or anything, and a lot of people were in the same situation as well around the world, weren't well off. How many times did we hear we can't afford that? Money doesn't grow on trees. We kind of all heard the same thing about money. And our money beliefs have passed down from there. And that's where I got my money beliefs. Until I really started to look at my beliefs. And when you kind of look at it, you go, wow, this is kind of mental when you think about it. And you can actually change a belief. Because the beautiful thing about being a human being is the fact that we can change. Uh, we have the ability to change. We have the ability to look at a belief that we've got, a limiting belief that we've got, and we can change it. We can turn it around. And there's a formula for that, and I'm going to show you that formula in a second. But I wanted to show you why, why, why do we form our beliefs by the age of seven years old? The reason our brain is emitting electrical signals all the time. Right now it's emitting electrical signals all the time, and it depends on what frequency they're kind of, um, emitting them. And I'm going to give you these kind of frequencies just now. The beta frequency is measured in 12 to 38 hertz, that's cycles per second. And most adults are in this kind of frequency with the brain waves. So we're thinking about the, the, the rent, the mortgage, the car payments, picking up the kids, mm -hmm. taking the kids to school. We've got all that to think about as well. And our brains are kind of emitting at this frequency. It's called the beta. So we've got the next frequency level is the alpha, so 8 to 12 hertz. And the next one is the theta level. That's kind of where you're starting to kind of get into a meditative state and you're kind of sleepy and you're kind of that kind of daydreamy way as well. And same with the alpha state as well. And we've got the delta state, that's in kind of deep sleep state. That's the four main states. Now, there's more than that, there's about six or seven kind of other uh, states altogether, but that's the four main ones. So, by the age of, from birth up into about seven years old, we are in the alpha theta state. So, up from birth up until seven years old, we're in the alpha theta state. And the alpha state, as I said, that kind of meditative, kind of daydreamy way, and theta state is as well. And that's how children learn so quickly. Because in the alpha theta state, that all the information they again is going straight to the subconscious mind. More or less, it's a direct route into the subconscious mind. And this is why they take on beliefs from the parents. This is why they take on kind of lots of learning. They learn so quickly. It's absolutely amazing. Because you can give somebody, a three-year-old, an iPad now, and they can, they can work it within a half an hour. And I, I can't even work the bloody remote control TV from a TV, do you know what I mean? So, but these three-year-olds, they can pick up an iPad and they can work it, and it's no bother. That's why they can learn so quickly. That's why they take on beliefs like that as well, because they're in the alpha-theta state. As we get older, then that kind of disappears. We go into the kind of beta state unless we do something about it, like kind of meditation, like kind of Tai Chi, stuff, all the kind of stuff that kind of brings that brainwave level down. 
this is when we can start to look at beliefs and change our beliefs as well. So I want to go on to the belief cycle. How are beliefs formed when we're kind of first thinking about, not even thinking about a belief as an unconscious thing, but beliefs are formed, first of all, with a perception. So you've got perception of yourself. So your perception might be, I am intelligent. So it's a positive perception. So that's the belief you've got about yourself. And then what happens after that? Your brain, subconsciously, you start to look for evidence to prove that. So at a subconscious level, your brain says, I am intelligent, and that's the perception you have. And then your brain goes out and says, well, you pass your exam, you pass your driving test, you love reading, you love kind of socialising, you, you like doing all the kind of intelligent stuff. And that's evidence that kind of provides and um, brings up that evidence all the time. And when I say repetition, I'm talking about using the positive affirmations. We've got negative and uh, positive affirmations we use every single day in our lives. I'm intelligent. I am beautiful, I am gorgeous, I am a hunk, or whatever it is you can affirm to yourself. But negatively as well, I'm not good looking, I'm too fat. All the negative kind of things we say about ourselves is an affirmation. And we say that affirmation over and over and over again. It's repetition. And that's the I am statements that become a belief. And then over time, that belief becomes a rock solid belief and it's hard to kind of get rid of that belief once it's become a rock solid belief. And that's for what's for and that's how beliefs are really formed. And we kind of look at that way and we kind of break it down into its kind of component size. This is how beliefs are formed. So how do we change our beliefs? So we've got a new belief we want to install or a limiting belief that we want to change into a positive belief. So when we introduce a new belief into a mind, so, so okay, for example, you think you are not intelligent, you think you're thick, we'll just use that example, and you want to introduce a new belief saying, I am intelligent. Your brain kind of goes, no, hold the bus, you can't have two beliefs that are opposing each other at the same time. So your mind cannot hold two opposing beliefs at the same time, it's just it cannot do it. You, believe, you either believe one or the other. I'm intelligent or I'm not intelligent. So how does it work then? Well, we have to soften the old belief. And this, by the way, these two opposing beliefs, is called cognitive dissonance. And as I said, cognitive dissonance is you cannot hold two, two opposing beliefs in your mind at the same time. And that's what cognitive dissonance is for. So, how do we change it then? Well, we start to have the new perception of ourself. I'm intelligent, for example you start to look for the evidence. So we go back and look at how the beliefs are formed, the belief cycle. And we say, okay, I want a new perception of myself. I am intelligent. That's your new perception. And then we start to look for evidence. But we do it on a conscious level. We don't do it at the unconscious level because it's all done unconsciously before that. So we now do it at the conscious level. So you say, okay, I'm intelligent. What's the evidence to prove that? You say, okay, I pass an exam, for example. I love reading books, for example. It doesn't necessarily make you intelligent, but if you like doing kind of intelligent stuff, you look for evidence to kind of prove that as well. And then repetition, if you do that often enough, and you say that often enough, and you start to look for evidence, and over time, this old belief that you have that wasn't, that you're not intelligent, and that was rock solid before. Because you're questioning this belief now, that kind of starts to kind of melt a wee bit. It starts to kind of fray at the edges. And this new belief that you're trying to get over the top of it is, is questioning it, and it's starting to say, okay, I'm starting to believe that I am actually intelligent. This is, this is quite cool. And this old belief starts to melt away because you're getting more evidence, more repetition, and over time, this old belief is just kicked out the door, and this new belief is now a rock solid belief. That's how you get rid of limiting beliefs. And that's it kind of in a nutshell. That's it done very quickly. All this is, is kind of more components to that, but that's it done very quickly. And that's how we change our beliefs. And we kind of do it over time. But we can change, if we can look at one belief or one limiting belief we have at a time and just say to ourselves, okay, every month I'm going to look at a limiting belief and I'm going to turn that around. If we could change even one belief 
or one limiting belief, we can change our whole life. And remember I said that your world kind of changes literally because of your beliefs. If you can change one belief, you could change your whole world. But if you've done this for a month, for a whole year, every month you looked at a limiting belief and changed it, then you've got 12 beliefs, you literally change your whole world. That's all it takes if you want to work on yourself kind of for one year and just keep at it. Your, your whole world kind of literally changes. So, <clears throat> now what I'd like to do is kind of look at an exercise to do. We're just going to take 10, 15 minutes to do this. And I'll get it up, I'll kind of explain it just now if you want to kind of pass that around your room. And this is just a different way of looking at ourselves and just thinking about how we look at ourselves as well. Thanks. Okay, we'll finish that there just now. This is an exercise you can spend loads of time on. <laughs> you could literally spend a couple of hours just doing this exercise alone. But it's just to give you a taste uh, kind of, of what, what you want to believe about yourself, what you currently believe about yourself as well, because what comes up, ultimately what comes up, is the beliefs that you hold about yourself just now. And we do have a lot of limiting beliefs, particularly, and this is about business, so we're talking about business, but as I said, that transfers over to your personal life as well. Did, can I ask anybody, if, did anything come up in doing that exercise for you? Did, did you discover kind of limiting beliefs that you have just now? Did anybody kind of discover something big about themselves? If anybody would like to share I would. something. Um, me being here. I'm here for a reason. Um, when I, um, I don't need to get emotional. Um, when I saw this, I, both you and Maria have been a constant um, learning tool for me. Wow. And I love that. And I'm here because of that. Because you did a lot for me. And me being here today, when I saw this, I, I knew it was a sign I had to be here today. Wow. Mm. And how does it feel? Great. You feel, and how does it feel doing the exercise just now? Did anything come up? Good, because it, it showed me that um, uh, yes, I'm relieved. But it also showed me that what I was thinking is right. Um, my energy and the things I've been seeing lately has all been bringing me to this point. And this is a journey that I wanted to take. And you're on the right path? Yes. Excellent, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you. Anybody else like to share something that maybe came up for them? If anybody else wants to share anything. Any kind of limiting beliefs that you have about yourself? Or you've just kind of realised the limiting belief you have about yourself? Particularly in your kind of business life? Not to go any limiting beliefs in your business life. <laughs> For me, and actually, I almost started to cry too, but I didn't have any chance. For me, <laughs> yeah. I'm not worthy because all my life it's always been you're a failure, you're no good, you're, that all my life has been like that. So for me to write out who I am now, and I'm like, okay, I got this, I'm worthy. That was that was hard, but I am, you know. So that was is that you're no good, enough. you're not good. Yeah, enough. and so then, can you see evidence to prove that you are now? A worthy person? I can. You can? I, mean, I do, so I can. So the more evidence you find, yeah. that will become a rock solid belief for yeah. you as well. And that has a knock on effect, it's like a tree. It has a knock on effect on most of other things in your life as well. So you have the belief now that I am worthy. That will give you the confidence. You, you've now got confidence in yourself. You can do a product. You know, you create a product. <laughs> yeah. And you can do a live show. You can do, you can do all these other things because of that one belief. So it has a knock on effect. It's like a tree with lots of different branches. So, thanks for sharing that. Really appreciate that. Anybody else? Yes. So, first of all, pardon me for being late. Oh, it's, it's fine. I understand. Um, and my name is Rob. Oh, Robin. Oh, Robin, Robin Raj. Yes. Right. Excellent. Yeah, call me Rob. Yeah, right, right. right. And I know it's counterintuitive. I'm right in the female, but nonetheless. It's <laughs> <laughs> a long story. So. Anyway, um, what I, this is the work kind of that I implement with my clients. 
Excellent. And well, I'm my best experiment. And I recognize that um, my human nature and our natural tendency is to write down what you can't do. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And so when I was writing this, it was great because it was like not what I do, you know, continuously setting out for myself. And it's actually got me into the space where I just don't, I no longer give a shit about what box I fit in. Yeah. Because I fit into many boxes. And um, all of these strengths and things that I was writing down, I'm like, dang, I'm good. Right? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. But you know, I was really recognizing that, you know, your first tendency is to do the negative part. So That's right. to pay attention to that and then um, and move forward so you can implement. Thank you so much for sharing that. I do appreciate that. Yeah. And I think that kind of says a lot as well. We tend to think negatively about ourselves as well and tend to think negatively in life. It's a natural tendency because that's where kind of everything kind of flows towards the negative. And it's hard. It's like swimming upstream to think about the positive kind of things all the time and the positive impact we have on our, on our own world as well. So that's really kind of powerful. But writing this down is just the first step. This is just to give you, it's like, is to give you an overview of what can be real. Because at first, you're going to have that cognitive dissonance that we spoke about, because your mind is going to say, no way, I'm not worthy, but because you've not believed that you're worthy all these years. So there's that, that cognitive dissonance, but the more you do this, the more you look at it, this is when things really start to change in your business world, in your personal world, and your life literally changes. I'm here today because of the beliefs that I changed. There's no way, and two years ago, even thinking about standing up and doing something like, even thinking about, I, I had a shit myself talking in front of people, <laughs> to be honest. There's no way I could have done this, but I'm here today because I've changed the beliefs. So I, what you said as well, Raj, I'm my own best experiment. Yeah. And this is kind of what I teach. So thank you so much for doing this. That's, I could talk about this all day, but I'm not gonna. And um, that's a kind of belief principle, and it just gives you something to think about, something to take home, and really start to work on yourself as well. And before we kind of, before I introduce the next speaker, Lon, this is all going to be in the YDF program. So anybody that's a YDF member, you're going to get these talks in the YDF program. You're going to get downloads as well. We're going to be speaking about webinars later on. You're going to get all that as well. And if you're a non-YDF member, we're going to set you up with this particular kind of module as well in the YDF program. You'll not get the full YDF program, but you'll get this uh, module in it if you're a non-YDF member just now. So you'll get all this as well, all the talks for being here. Um, just to say a big huge thank you for being here. So I forgot to say that at the beginning. So now, what I'd like to do is introduce you to our next speaker. And we have Lauren Jono is our next speaker.